Recently, Elon Musk said this. I kind of think that, that the whole notion of work from home is, is a bit like the, you know, the, 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 the fake Marie Antoinette quote, let them eat cake. You're going to make the people who make your food that gets delivered that they, they can't work from home? Does that seem morally right? While the quote about Marie Antoinette is technically correct, technically she never said, let them eat cake. Everything else about his statement is kind of a hot take, or is it? Work from home or remote work was popularized or rather globalized when the COVID-19 pandemic happened in 2020, when all of us were confined to our homes, unable to leave and stuck with the voices in our heads. Fast forward to today, many Malaysians have grew to love remote work with Microsoft reporting two thirds of Malaysians, which is more than 10 million Malaysian employees, by the way, wanting work from home to stay. In fact, in 2020, Google search results for remote work spiked and has been on the climb ever since. However, just like the king of Twitter, many Malaysian employers did not take the concept of work from home very well. In April of 2022, the Malaysian Employers Federation director came out with a statement saying, firms might cut salaries of employees who work from home, which did not go so well. But this does beg the question, what do employers have against work from home? The most common arguments employers have in regards to work from home are lack of control, decline of office culture, unfairness to employees who cannot work from home, and decreased productivity. I love the last one. Let's start at the top of the list. Lack of control. One of the most crucial tasks for managers, middle managers, supervisors, or leaders in general is to monitor and supervise their employees to ensure that their workflow is efficient and also streamlined to ensure productivity. You're gonna hear that word a lot. However, with remote work arrangements, uh, this was a bit hard to do. In a report by the Harvard Business Review, 40% of 215 managers and supervisors reported to be having a hard time adjusting to remote work. It was reported that they had low self-confidence when performing their tasks remotely. And 41% agreeing with the statement, I'm skeptical as to whether remote workers can remain motivated in the long term. However, the drivers for these numbers could be due to a number of reasons, such as lack of training and support by the employer, lack of trust by their own boss, and an unfamiliarity with remote remote work practices. Secondly, the decline of office culture. Now, if you ask someone what office culture means, you might get a different answer depending on who you ask. But the common thing of all of these definitions is basically a collection of attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors that make up the work atmosphere in an office environment. It could be as little as wishing your colleague good morning or knowing who spends the most time in the bathroom. I am looking at you, Najmi. Culture is cultivated with any sort of social interaction between colleagues. But with remote work, social interaction is behind the window of a computer screen. Get it? Window. One survey of 700 remote workers who previously worked in the office said that the one thing that they missed the most was social connection between their colleagues. But that was in 2020. Now employees want remote work to stay and office culture evolved with that in mind. Dr. Chaudhry, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, a professor at Harvard Business School states, once you transition to remote work, you have to reimagine how to build culture. The next point is one that was highlighted by Elon himself. I quote, The laptop class is living in La La Land. As I said, look at the cars. Are people working from home here? Of course not. That was my Elon impression. It was bad. Basically, what he's saying is that remote work is unfair to those who have to work on site. Factory workers, labor workers, construction workers, grab drivers, Uber riders. I'm about to spit some bars. The short version of it is he's right. On site workers, labor workers cannot work from home. And it is somewhat unfair to them in that regard. And with the rise of remote work, these workers have been reported to not be so happy with their current work arrangements. The Boston Consulting Group conducted a study of 7,000 workers from seven different countries. The results showed that roughly 50% of them were unhappy with things like scheduling, benefits, career growth, upskilling, among other things. Even though their work is pivotal to both society and the economy, they're still human beings. They still have human wants and human needs. And as more and more companies around the world are moving towards a hybrid work method, they need to lend a hand to the on-site workers as well. Flexible schedules, expanded benefits, career growth and upskilling, and support and commitment are just some of the suggested ways to improve employee satisfaction. Unfortunately, not much is being done in this area. As a result, this group, which makes up about 75% of the workforce in most countries, is increasingly dissatisfied and at risk of quitting. Lastly, and definitely the biggest one, is reduced 
productivity. Employers really love to whip this one out every time there's an argument about work from home. Employers claim that remote work or work from home arrangements reduced the productivity of their employees as a whole. In a Microsoft study conducted in 2022, it was found that 85% of employers say the shift to hybrid work has made it challenging to have confidence that employees are being productive. But is remote work really impacting productivity negatively? A Cisco Global Hybrid Work Study of 2022 reported that, domestically, in Malaysia, productivity of workers increased 55.1% with quality of work increasing 59.7%. However, this isn't a one-size-fits-all scenario. It differs from person to person. There's a multitude of reasons as why productivity dropped for one person. It could be distractions at home, fewer interactions, technical issues, environmental change, or etc. As we've seen, again, due to the pandemic, some people work better at home and some people don't. However, however, many Malaysians have attributed to increased productivity to things like flexible working hours, reduced work commute time, and a comfortable working environment when it comes to remote work. I mean, think about it when you spend less time on the road going to work and actually more time doing the work, it's an obvious reason as to why productivity increased. Even with these numbers, why do employers still say that remote work reduces productivity? Well, to put it simply, it could be something called productivity theater. What that means is if you are busy, you are productive. With remote work, when managers can't see you being busy, they equate that to you not being productive. Productivity theater could literally be you just pretending to be busy, like fast walking to somewhere around the office, like fast walking to a meeting room or fast walking to the bathroom just to pretend like you were in a rush. Or something that even I do is staring at a computer screen, looking all stressed. When people look at me, they think that, oh, he's stressed doing work. When in truth, I'm just on Twitter watching the world burn. But when people are working remotely, the ever watchful eye of managers and bosses can't exactly reach their employees, which results in them relying on various methods to ensure that their employees are working, constantly updating tasks on Slack, on Teams, installing trackers on computers, having more meetings that could just have been emails like, what the f You've probably been through them. You probably have your own list. I myself have spent an equal amount of time pretending to be busy than actually doing work. Because to your boss, efficiency doesn't always mean productivity. Taufik Rao, CEO and founder of Catalog with a Q, wrote, The dramatic workplace shifts of the pandemic gave us a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to reshape how we work forever. Now our research shows that we're falling back into old habits, ones that should have been cast aside when we had the chance. So are Malaysian employers unable to fully implement the work from home arrangements because they don't know how to? Or is it because they don't want to? To be fair, employers have every right to do with their business however they see fit. But as said before, remote work might work for some, but definitely not for every field and definitely not for every employee. But one thing needs to be understood. With an increasing number of Malaysians wanting remote work to be a permanent fixture in their work environment, employers might be hard pressed into finding a solution very soon. A survey conducted by Randstad reported that 41% of Singaporeans were willing to turn down a job offer if they couldn't work from home or if they didn't have flexible work arrangements. And according to Deloitte's Global Gen Z and Millennial Survey of 2022, most Gen Zs, 75%, and Millennials, 77%, prefer hybrid or remote work, but less than half currently have the option to do so. It is worth noting that no matter what remote work method you find online, I'm going to sound like a broken record, might work for some, but won't work for others. Employers will have to take some time, effort, and money to basically find the best, most comfortable remote work arrangements for them if they really want to take remote work seriously. But as the numbers have shown, it might be worth trying because Malaysians have found a home in working from home.